All set? Three, Jeez. two, one, go! Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Uh The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names in the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch. But there was something truly special about riding in Benny the cartoon car to the video rental store and picking out your favorite movie by hand. Mm -hmm. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes with 30-year-old lust and a (laughs) three-year-old dinky. AJ Vince, Sean Breyer, how the heck are you? How did you... I don't even want to know how you know yeah. that. You know? I mean... I don't even want to know well, how you I know that. I haven't been in a pool with you ever, yeah. I don't think. Well, yeah, you and can, You can tell things. <laughs> you, t- you, you can, can see. Tell Sean, you wear tight pants, man. I'm, I'm a grower, not a shower. Okay. Well, 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 what are you going to do? That's what I was going to say. That's fine. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, it's time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss the most expensive movie ever made at the time of its release, a movie that was the first and last time that cartoon characters from Walt Disney and Warner Brothers appeared on screen together, a frighteningly adult movie that still somehow garnered a PG rating. We'll dive into that. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> this movie was chosen directly by our Patreon members. We are, of course, talking about 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And for those looking to find this movie right now on a streaming platform, as of the recording of this episode, mid-July 2022, Disney Plus coming through. Disney Plus. What about Warner Plus? Warner Plus? Is there a Warner Plus? No, because clearly Warner Brothers is not as cool as Disney. I think that would be HBO. Paramount? Yeah, HBO? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Well, they don't don't have it, and they used to be everything, so. All you need to do is collect as many streaming services as you can, so that way you can just watch whatever you want, whenever you want. And you'll pay more than you paid for cable or dish yeah. or anything. Yeah, that's totally fine. Cool. That's or the way you, you do it. Have a DVD collection like Sean. And yeah, I went and bought the Blu-ray. You guys, so. that seems too expensive. I had to, it was. Yeah, you had to get in your car. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, driving. So, in order to, to properly dissect and review this movie with a modern eye, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, let's start with you. Tell us the first time you saw the movie. What your nostalgic rating is? This was this was a movie that. It, it was assumed that I was going to love this movie. Mm. Like, I, my mom and, like, my brother Ray and... AJ's going to love this. Like, people, like, like the boys love this movie. Like, it, oh, the boys love this. Like, let's put, let's put Who Framed Roger... Oh, it's on TBS. Let's put it on. Put it on. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> so, like, I... But I didn't. I didn't get it. I was scared. I didn't I, understand I the premise. I say, too spooky. I was terrified of this movie. And are you kidding me? We'll get there with Christopher Lloyd, but... <laughs> GTFO, bro. <laughs> All right. Cool. Those um, eyes, dude. Dude, I, so I watched this like very, very sparingly. I would watch it when it was on. Uh, there, I, I realized now watching it again that we'll get to, I didn't even realize what was actually going on. Oh, yeah. So I'm sorry. I can't give this thing any more than a 3.5. Wow. wow. Nostalgic yeah. rating Dang. 3.5 for AJ. Yeah. Sean, what about you, man? Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was a kid, I was, it was in my uncle's basement. It was like one of those tapes of those that, basement tapes, that yeah. would uh, that would be in circulation with like Richie Rich yeah. and yeah. Breakfast Club and whatnot. And this one never made it. So no. I've God. never seen it. What? You've <laughs> never seen it? We bring Sean on as this movie buff, and he's like, heck yeah, I'll be on. Let's talk about Citizen Kane. Let's talk about all this. <laughs> and then we're like, no, you didn't get the memo. We're going to do Blank Check, uh, Airborne. <laughs> I mean, I've yeah, seen yeah. that. Who framed Roger I've seen Blank Check a thousand times, regrettably. We're going to do Airborne, then Air Bud, and, and then Air Heads. And then Air Heads. Those are all great movies that I've seen. <laughs> All right, well, Sean is a zero then. For me, I yeah, I love this movie. I, Did you? I was uh, being a little older than you guys. Oh, I definitely, no. sure. definitely oh, saw sweet, this. Sweet. We we bought this one, and we watched this quite a bit. Had the VHS. It had the like the thicker VH, VHS the clam shell. Yeah, the clam shell yeah. stuff. Watched it all the time. Played the NES game all the time. Really? I would, I would give it a 10 if it weren't for how frighteningly scary some of the <laughs> moments were. Dude. So I had to bump that down. I'm more of an eight nostalgic rating Thanks. on that. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, David Gould, our executive producer for this episode, he said, being raised in the era of Saturday morning cartoons, I love them all. Batman, the animated series, Rocco's Modern Life, Rugrats, mm-hmm. and the list goes on. But nothing satiated my hidden bloodlust like the antics of Looney Tunes. So imagine my <laughs> excitement when grabbing the VHS <laughs> sleeve with a cartoonish cover of Who Framed Roger Rabbit at our local blockbuster. The intro started like all the cartoons I love so much, and I was enthralled. But that quickly changed to confusion as real people seeped into my cartoon dreamland. Although slightly let down, I still enjoyed seeing f- familiar characters being spooked out by Christopher Lloyd and being left with a funny feeling by Jessica Rabbit. So with this, <laughs> with this indifference, my nostalgic rating is a 6.0. So as a group, we are a 5.83 nostalgically. That's and my fault. No, you're, you didn't count. You didn't count. Yeah, so there's, well. it wasn't a zero. It was just an NA. You I know could have I mean? upped it David, a little bit. David, will you just go on to like IMDb and write like reviews for everything <laughs> that's happening? And then I'll just try to find it. Just put it somewhere in like the six to seven range. I'll probably find it. Um, but that would be great. So I don't have to like fumble through yep. all the, this is a good movie. I don't know why, but I didn't really like it anyways. Two out of 10. And that's what I get all the time. I don't even really remember watching Instead, it. Instead, David could have this written yeah. out beautifully. Beautifully. Bloodlust for cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> cartoon violence. That Come on. is gold. So, so funny enough, that nostalgic rating puts us uh, in the bottom 10 of any movie we've done that is just better than Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, just worse than Red Dawn. You know what happens to those movies, though? What? Later on. They usually get better. They usually get a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Weird, right? Well, we'll see what our modern day rating is soon. But friends, please listen up before we move on to Sean's informational detailed segment. I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Cedar Ridge Distillery. We are quickly approaching our 100th episode and two year anniversary. Yeah. Now that we've established ourselves and have some momentum, lots of people reaching out going, I want to sponsor. I want to give you guys stuff. And but back when we were getting started, the phone never rang. Nobody called us. Uh, The only one who trusted us from the start was Cedar Ridge, and they've been with us since then. In many ways, we've had similar trajectories. We've been climbing the podcast charts, approaching 1 million downloads. Yeah. Same for Cedar Ridge. We can't even keep up with all the awards they're winning for their incredible lineup of whiskeys. Partnering up with partners uh, like someone local like Cedar Ridge that makes a product we actually use and love is a no-brainer for us. Cedar Ridge is one of the fastest-growing whiskey companies in America who was named Distillery of the Year in 2017. Uh, I mean, their products are incredible. Quintessential American Single Malt, Whiskey Collaboration with Slipknot. Heretic Anthem, boy. And, of course, the flagship bourbon, which I'm drinking right now. It's just in my little shot glass here. If you're in Iowa around the Midwest, you can likely find some at your favorite local establishments. If you want to give it a shot but are elsewhere in the country, you can order online at Mm cedarridgewhiskey.com. We hope you'll make it a point to grab some and understand why we love it so much, and we're so glad they're sponsoring the podcast. So leave us a message. Tell us what you think. Drink responsibly. Please do. cedarridgewhiskey.com. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. So, like I promised, Sean, you're going to hook us up with the pertinent, important details of the movie. Do it. I That's think your job. I am. Let's All see. right. Produced by Frank Marshall, Robert Watts, Kathleen Kennedy, and Steven Spielberg. You guys know that guy? Uh, no, what's his name again? Say Steve, it again. Steven Spielberg. Sandberg. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sandy Helberg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the Mortal Kombat <laughs> director. Oh, oh that guy. yeah. Shit. Spaceballs. Ba- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Based off the novel by Gary, I think it's K. Wolf. Written by Jeffrey Price and Peter <laughs> Peter Seaman. <laughs> oh no! Oh, this is fun. We're having, we're having a good, good time. time. We're having a good time. <laughs> All right. Uh. Cinematography by the great Dean Cundy. Do you know what he shot, Mike? Rad. No. Wait. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> Halloween. Oh, I know Jurassic the answer Park. I'm looking at, but I. Jurassic Park, he's, he's very good. He's, he Halloween. does lighting stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Wow. Uh, edited by Arthur Schmidt. You guys know that guy? No. Yeah. No. Directed by Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> Is this a new thing where you guys <laughs> you know that guy? Oh, you know that guy? Oh, you heard him, right? Oh. Cast <laughs> Bob Hoskins, Christopher Lloyd, Joanna Cassidy, Charles Fleischer, Stubby K, Lou Hirsch, Alan Tilvern, Joel Silver's in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? Yeah, I Joel guess. I never, I didn't. I mean, it might be someone else named Joel Silver. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and Kathleen him. Turner, an uncredited Kathleen Turner. In 1981, Disney bought the rights to Gary Wolf's story, who, who censored Roger Rabbit. Price and Seaman mm-hmm. were hired to write two drafts of the script for Disney, and Zemeckis came, came in to offer to direct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> <laughs> right. If we're asking who censored it, right. I think we know the answer now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Dude, real quick, you know who Joel Silver played? He was the director of the cartoon. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's insane. 
before the cocaine. It was days. an animated yeah. line of white powder. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really, you know, it's it's how Doesn't Roger count. acted when he drinks correct. alcohol. Yes, yeah, correct. Of course. Yes, yes. Having some off the, having some off of a couple box op, having come off a couple of box office failures, Zemeckis was rejected. After Spielberg and Kennedy were on board, the the proje- project started moving in the right direction. The film was greenlit with a budget of thirty million, and Terry Gilliam was offered to direct, but declined because he thought it was too challenging. He later regretted that decision and chalked it up to pure laziness. Yep. I don't. I don't see a director like that being like that's going to be hard because <laughs> Terry Gilliam's like yeah a crazy crazy visual director. Yeah. But uh, Harrison Ford was Spielberg's first choice, obviously, for the role of Eddie Valiant. Uh, oh, but God, he was that been great. too expensive. Yeah. Chevy Chase was also vetted, but wasn't interested. Bill Murray was a strong contender. Wow. Spielberg and Zemeckis both wanted the actor, but Murray was unreachable. Clearly, he later heard that classic B- Murray later heard that he was considered and freaked out at not being available even for a phone call. Hey, Bill, I, I know you listen, and uh, here's yeah. a tip: yeah. get a phone. Get a phone. Well, even even if you have a phone, keep it Maybe off of keep silent, or yeah. at that time, keep it off the cool. Take it out of the glove don't box. Don't keep it off of the ringer. Yeah, man. there you go. Thanks, Bill. <sighs> Anyway, uh, apparently he was in like a restaurant and he read like a trade or something <laughs> like that that he was considered and, and like he freaked out audibly at like somebody. Cool. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Robin Williams, Robert Redford, Jack Nicholson, Sly Stallone, Wallace Shawn, Ed Harris, and Charles Grodin, and also Don Lane were also considered. Hoskins was chosen for his skills and because he looked in, like he belonged in that era. I think it was a great choice. Can I just say that Wallace Shawn would have been an amazing Eddie Valiant? Yeah. Him he, just running around, just yelling, inconceivable! <laughs> 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 In this cartoon world. <laughs> you want to hear who would be a great Judge Doom? Please. Tim Curry auditioned oh, for the role, but God. the producers thought he was too terrifying. That would it's, be terrifying. So, But picture that. Someone more terrifying than Cl- Christopher Lloyd was in this movie. I, it, it would be Tim you, Curry. Yes. I mean, he's the only one. Obviously, we'll talk about it, but Christopher Lloyd is amazing in this. Yeah. But yeah. Tim Curry, dude. Oh, oh my gosh. God! It would have little bit been a little understated. Yeah, it wouldn't have been as like toony, but it would have been I terrifying. No, it makes me think of like like uh, was it Annie or yeah. Little Orphan Annie? Like uh, that whole thing, uh, like his performance in that movie. Yeah, is that who that could have been? That could have been similar. I yeah. really have no idea. Uh, but you, like I'm but that and obviously Home Alone two. Home Alone yes. two, his yes. performance. But, in that. but he makes that movie. That <laughs> smile, that Grinch smile. Can you imagine that with cartoon <laughs> eyes? Yeah, he no. has a cartoon face. You're right. <laughs> Christopher Lee was also considered. Lloyd was cast because he had worked with Zemeckis before. The script was heavily inspired by Chinatown, the Roman Polanski film. Their script was even based off a defunct sequel to Chinatown, which is going to be called Cloverleaf which was actually the name of the company in Roger Rabbit. Cloverfield. So, so basically, Roger Rabbit, yes. when you're watching Roger Rabbit, you're watching a sequel to Chinatown, which blows my fucking mind. Live action was okay. shot mostly in London at Elstree Studios. The film was going over budget and taking longer than expected, having Disney CEO Michael Eisner almost shut down production, <laughs> but Chairman Katzenberg talked him out of it. It went way over yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say Most right expensive here. movie at yeah. the time. Way, way over budget. The film reached to $70 million budget wow. of its projected $30 million, but when, in, when released on June 22nd, 1988, the producers were more than happy with its worldwide take of $351.5 million. Jeez. At the time, its release, like Mike said, that was, was the most that it made as the, well at yes, the time, right? Twentieth highest grossing film of all time, and the most at the at the time at for like three time. or four. It was years. the most, I think, in until the T two, I think, for that year, and then yes, no, I think like, most of all time a, grossing. I think, oh my lord, yeah, until like T two came along. Yeah, I think, I think it's sitting at twentieth right now, maybe. Yeah, yeah. this might all be mistakes. You can fact check us. Yes. <laughs> you can yell at us on TikTok. Everybody else does. It's We're fine. making this all up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just content. Who cares? Well, real quick, we all know that you guys have at least one friend of like your childhood or a sibling who loved this movie as much as you do. So hit that little share icon on your podcast app, directly message the episode to them. Sharing's caring. Yeah. It means a lot to us. It's one of the best ways you can support this podcast. You can also go to confusedbreakfast.com, get some t-shirts, check us out on the YouTubes, find our sold out show probably by this point wow. that you won't be able to go to and you'll be like, I didn't know about it. It's We've been telling you about it forever. It's also fine. mind-blowing. I don't, yeah. I'm I don't just know saying. Then, 
Sorry, you can also go to patreon.com slash confused breakfast. Uh, this episode was voted on by our Patreon top yeah. tier members. Yeah. If you want to join that crew, get access to 50 hours, I think 60 hours an hour bonus audio. You go to it, you sign up. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. Five bucks. Five, ten, 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 eight, ten. ten dollars. One dollar. One dollar. For There's the cost, for, for the low, low cost <laughs> of at least you a two. half a cup of coffee a day. You too can save. You too can Three save. guys talking into my And phone. for $30 million, <laughs> you can get something kind of like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're right. I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, so up next, we got AJ, who does all the research for us, gives us the ratings, reviews of critics and fans alike. What do you got, man? I can't wait to share this one with you because <laughs> we're about to hit the, the tomato, tomato meter. meter. Gross. Definitely not a splat. It's not gross. No, far from it. Ninety-seven percent certified fresh. We have we have four movies. Princess Bride was a ninety-eight. That is number one okay, so far damn. of any movie we've done. We have yeah. four movies now tied at ninety-seven. Big Ghostbusters, Groundhog Day, and Roger Rabbit. I still can't believe Big's up there. Big I mean, I love it that much, but yeah. I, I mean, yeah, but I didn't know everyone else felt the same yeah, way. I know, right. But then again, I didn't know you would feel the same way as me. I, so here we are. I love you in this room. Yeah. Can we make out? Or? Sure. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, audiences uh, agreed, but not as much, apparently. 85%. Um, mm. uh, yeah, eh, whatever. 85 is a good score. It's still a great yeah. score. Um, but, and then uh, IMDb came in at 7.7. .7. That's number 17 on our list so far. That is, <laughs> that is tied with Boondock Saints. <laughs> Tied with Boondock Saints. That's a double feature if I ever heard one before. Oh, I would love that double feature. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You know what? I watched Boondock Saints, and I gotta say that's as that's as good as Roger Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, but they they do cool things. What the fuck is going on? It's you know fine. what? They have tattoos on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> They're brothers. They're brothers. Two brothers. <laughs> Two brothers in a vet against. Never mind. Um, there are so many critical reviews of this that were just a hundred out of a hundred, five oh, out of, of five. It's just insane thinking about this in the time. Um, of when this came out, and I—that's what I really tried to think about, especially like rewatching this. Is like in the in the moment in 1988, is it right? 88. Yes, 1988. Yeah. And it's like okay, in 88, this is how people felt about it. But um, New York Times, a film whose best moments are so novel, so deliriously funny, and so crazily unexpected that they truly must be seen to be must be seen to be <laughs> believed. Uh, USA Today. If it isn't flawless, neither is Fantasia. Here's a live-action animated Marvel with no screen at 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 attestant. I'm gonna try to say that word, guys. I'm not hmm. gonna help you. Uh, Chinatown may actually come the closest. All Whoa! Right. All right. Uh, Dave Kerr, brilliantly funny, bracingly smart, and surprisingly moving. And the list goes on. And on yeah. You yeah. know, uh, for for positives. What did people say on IMDb in 1988? Do you want? Oh, you want to hear about that? There, there was not a thing, right? The, no, it <laughs> wasn't. That was, that was the joke. It just went right over everybody's head. <laughs> cool joke, Mike. I'm going to hand back my joke. Yeah. Why don't, why don't we just strip you up. of your title <laughs> real quick? <laughs> Go ahead. And all right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think the delivery was too good, Mike. That's. I'll give you that. AJ, tell me more about IMDb. Oh, and honestly, the internet. please just continue. Yeah, AJ. yeah. Just let's you're just, right. I'm okay. Turn my mic off real quick. <laughs> um. All right. Well, let's take from the positive. We'll go this way because I love this because he says, warning, spoilers. No, oh, no. Said Joseph Burton O'Neill in 2020. What a yawn film. So boring. Plotline, boring. Not even Jessica Rabbit was a saving <laughs> grace. What were they thinking? The whole thing stinks like yesterday's diapers. Where are the spoilers at? <laughs> <laughs> diapers? <laughs> a mention of Jessica Rabbit? <laughs> Spoilers. He said, warning. Spoilers. It's in red print. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You're a human. He forgot. Whatever. <laughs> He's a human diaper. He's a human diaper. Um, how about a, we'll do a positive. This was also in 2020. A technical marvel with an engaging story. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is more than just a technical marvel. Uh, as it seamlessly blends live action with animation in a way that stands far above any other attempt. It's also an engaging story with iconic characters. Despite the goofy premise, this film has a heart and a sense of realism. If you haven't seen this one yet, give it a chance. P -p 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 please? <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. You nailed it. Pretty nice. I tried. Um, 
and then I've got one more, and this is another one out of ten. <laughs> and he just said, I couldn't get into it at all. And this was big, very bad Tom who said this. <laughs> <laughs> He's very big, bad Tom. Bad, very big Tom. I heard high praise as to how this movie rece- was received in the early 20th century. Great animation. <laughs> How all the old time tunes were brought in together in a single movie, how it was combined well with the live action as well. (laughs) Uh, Dave, I need you on this one, man. I need you here. Uh, This may all be true, uh, but the star of the show, Roger Rabbit, was awful. He was completely irritating. He kept jumping around. He kept talking so fast I couldn't understand what he was saying. After five minutes, I simply couldn't stand him, and I turned the movie off. No wonder he didn't stay in the public eye for long, except among cartoon animal enthusiasts. <laughs> so, he's a, wait, he's a cartoon. There's lots to break down here. Let's, there's a lot to unpack. He thinks that Roger Rabbit's a real human. He thinks, yes. Okay. Yep, he thinks he's a real human, but he also understands why he didn't stay in the public eye. And then he also gave this movie a review after turning it off after five minutes. (laughs) (laughs) So the problem here is uh, he's just completely unreliable in everything he has just said. Yeah, cool. So he's he's big, very bad Tom at making reviews. That's what he is. Tom? Tom. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Well as well. Well. Well as well. As well. As As well as well. As well. Well. Might as well. As well. So. That was weird. All right, we are seconds away from reviewing this movie scene by scene, but first we need to give you some details about our sponsor, Felix Gray Glasses. In case you don't know what they are, they are making blue light filtering glasses that filter out all the harmful blue light that hits our eyeballs constantly all day long. They aren't funny-looking glasses. They're completely normal-looking, stylish, comfortable uh, glasses that protect our eyes from the damaging effects of blue light, which which basically just emanate in everything we do, computer screens, phones, TVs, whatever. It's just blue light everywhere. It's no secret that we love the glasses, and we each have multiple pairs. I have a pair of the Nash and and the Volta. Nash has my prescription in it. That's the one that I wear at night in the morning when I don't have my contacts in. Uh, But then I also bought the pair of the Voltas. That's for when I'm, like, hanging out on the computer doing some editing. They're Mm -hmm. a little more – they're like, I think, what AJ has. That's what I've got. A little bigger, a little more stylish. Volta. Those have no prescription in it. Um the Nash is perfect for me, just like at home in between me walking from my bathroom to my bed and then watching Stranger Things 4 for the third time straight through. Yeah. That's perfect for those. And the Voltas for everyday use. So, like, we love them. They're stylish. They're affordable. They look normal. People wouldn't even know you're wearing special filtering glasses. I mean, a uh, producing team, do they look like they're wearing special filtering glasses? No. No. <laughs> okay, we'll pay you afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, you'll be glad when you realize all the negative effects that, that this blue light has on you. So don't be afraid to reach out to us about fit, style, color options. We will tell you the truth. Non-prescription, prescription available. Go to felixgrayglasses.com slash confused. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash confused. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. Go do it. Don't be a nerd. See the future. Look for the bird. Yeah. You got yeah. it, baby. I got the hoppers because it's Dennis Hopper and it's yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. And then I like it. You look Ma- good. Mario Brothers. Thank yeah. you very I much. I don't think I could wear it. It's perfect for your face shape. I, appreciate I don't think it. I could wear I appreciate that. that very much. I look like an idiot. <laughs> hey, you should shave your beard off and look like Wolverine. Is that what you're doing? Kind of? Yeah. Okay. It's it coming looks back good. a yeah, little bit. Yeah, no, you should shave that off and leave it like Wolverine. I All like right. it. Spike your hair a bit. All right. Yeah. We're not doing that right now. <laughs> What's going on? Check What's us out on YouTube to see what we look like. Well, boys, what do you say we enter a world where cartoons and humans live together? Humans are better than expected, and tunes are worse than they appear on screen. As long as we keep our system fully stocked with booze, we should be able to live and work harmoniously together. Or maybe we won't. It's the story of a man, a woman, and a rabbit in a triangle of trouble. Mm. Here we go. Yeah, boy. So the film opens with a live taping of a cartoon. Private Eye Eddie Valiant is called to the Maroon Cartoon Studios by R.K. Maroon, who is upset that one of the studio's biggest stars, Roger Rabbit, isn't performing well. Maroon chalks Roger's acting mistakes up to him being worried about his wife, Jessica. Maroon assigns Valiant to investigate. Later that evening, Valiant goes to the Ink and Paint Club where he encounters Toontown's owner Marvin Acme and sees Jessica Rabbit perform. Afterwards, he gets photos of Jessica and Acme playing patty cake. This is this is interesting to me because like you know people of the older generations remember that 
movies actually used to start this way. Yeah. Mm. Movies used to start with like a cartoon right. intro mm-hmm. and right. then it would move into the real movie. It wasn't this everything's in the same world. It was like, okay, now the cartoon's over. Here's the feature film. Um, it's just so cool how they kind of the first time you watched this, you you were like, oh, this is just a cartoon. Yeah. And then, oh, shit. Wait, there's humans in this, too? And it's like, it, it kind of blows your mind still on 5th, 10th, 20th watch when you see that happen. It's amazing. It was shocking to me when I, like, was rewatching it. And I was all in on the cartoons. Like, I really was. Yeah. So, again, full disclosure, just to let people in on how much I didn't know about this movie. I have seen it, but I just didn't know about it. Yeah. I thought that, like, Roger Rabbit was a cartoon that got sucked out of the cartoons, like some sort of, like, opposite Space Jam. Like you a, know what I mean? Like a last action hero yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. And, like, he got sucked out of it but he was because tr- he was trying to escape the cartoon police yeah. or something. <laughs> and I'm just, like, I had no idea. But then once that happened again and it zoomed back out, I was like, oh, my Lord, this is insane. I like how when you watched movies as a kid, you either went, you came in, like, 15, maybe half the movie in. Yeah. Or you're just like, yeah, this is a movie, and I'm going to make up what's happening on my own. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically he, what AJ. That's, did. that's exactly what I did. Movies. Flew yeah. himself into the movie, and you're like a child who wanders into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're like a child wanders in the little movie. <laughs> no, I agree. Like this, this opening bit is like it makes me miss like Tom and Jerry, yeah, and those kind of cartoons and Wiley e. Coyote and stuff like that. Like, you, and I, I think I don't know if they play them anymore. I know I'm like maybe on like Boomerang or something like that. If that's still around, that's still a thing. But uh, like, I weren't they kind of band or like kind of they they kitted the cartoons nowadays up because like, of like a violence in the cartoon oh, 100%. Yeah, like yeah. cancel culture type stuff yeah. happening for cartoons. Old cartoons yeah it's like, what? come on like it's this it's so much fun and like obviously it's fake i mean the reviewer didn't think so but no hey if you drop a refrigerator on somebody's head after you lift it above your head you could yeah. die yeah. yeah you could so possibly die it's really important that you know that um, we don't want to show that anymore. No, this cartoon so. gives me straight anxiety, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> it's like a ba- it's like the bad dream where you can't run fast enough. I, know. I had one last night where my band was playing a show at the Paramount, and they already let people in the door before we even loaded in and set up. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, go! Oh, how are we gonna do this? This is what this, this is what this cartoon is like. You can't. It just keeps going. You're like, come on, man. Well, I was like, I, as as annoying as like Roger Rabbit may be to some people, it's like I. I get why the baby is like trying to get away from him because he's like, and my cousin's brother and my brother's cousin. Yeah. Well, he's, he's kind of my cousin. Like, he's just explaining shit as the baby's getting away. I'm like, he's probably just running away from your annoying. Ass. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I it is 100. percent And I'm positive this has to be based off of a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Exactly. I think that. so. Yeah. Tom actually tried like, trying to like watch like, a kid. Yeah. And it's it's so quintessential. Like it is it is spot on. And it's really almost good. to the frame. This is yeah, 1988, and it is just like this is like better than some Pixar shit that I've seen. I know. Like, it's really good. Yeah, it, it's it's wonderful. And like all the cartoons. And then, but watching it this time around, and they came out of it, and they yelled "cut," and like the baby was all pissed <laughs> off. I thought that was hilarious. And then it comes out, and the the director Joel Silver, who's yelling, at, <laughs> who's yelling at everybody, and yelling at, at Roger Rabbit about like what happened. He didn't see stars. He's he like, saw oh, birds. you didn't, you missed your lines again. Oh my god, how many times you got to do this take? And then I find out it's because he did the the birds, I not the stars. So mad. I, I was, was so, so mad. As a kid. Like yeah. he did everything right. Why I'm are you mad at him? And you're doing that so all mad. in one take. Dude, no way. I just I don't get it. I really don't get it. Roger's an all star. Yeah, oh, he's yeah. the he's amazing. He's the best guy in Hollywood. I oh, I yeah. do like when they it's it's revealed like there's actually humans in, yep. involved in this world too. It is pretty fucking seamless. This is 1988. It still looks fantastic, even on like Blu-ray where it could like highlight right. some of, some of the like mistakes or anything like that. It still looks. We'll get great. to more of that. I, I want to yeah. point some of that stuff out later, but I have a question for AJ. So Valiant goes to Maroon's office. Yes, gets paid a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. <laughs> hundred dollars in 1947. Please figure out what the inflation of that is, because I want to know. This seems like a big deal. Hundred bucks seems like a giant deal for him. It's, like like his fucking troubles are over. It's dude. B- well, it's basically just. It's 100. like a little over a thousand dollars is the inflation rate. Damn. So like it's like ten forty eight so or something like that. A day's work kind of yeah. thing. Thousand yeah. bucks. Think about that. Like hey, well it's gonna cost you a thousand bucks if you say that today. I like that. That's basically what it is. 
Uh, and I looked at it. I was looking through it, and then he then he hands him the check for fifty bucks. And you're like five hundred. I don't know. I guess that's expenses, right? In the PI world, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> booze and yeah, yeah, and rent probably. Yeah, I love how he's just drawn to just just canisters of booze. He's just like he does like he touches his face. Yeah, he's he's like, like my mouth's really dry. Yeah, go to that like, booth. well, it's about to be more dry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? I don't know. I just like I thought that was a very funny thing to me. I don't know. Bob Hoskins. Yeah, Bob yeah, Hoskins. I don't, and it looks like at, throughout the movie where he's like taking out his canteen or whatever, like he doesn't carry a gun with him. I think he has a holster for his, his booze. I know. Yes, he definitely does. And I want that one. That is phenomenal. Is that a prop? Well, is that someone's prop? I don't know. I'm no. not calling it. No, I'm not, not going to call let's it. Let's keep yet. going. Let's all right, right, all right. Uh, there, there are a couple jokes. Like this is very adult movie. Like it, kids can watch this and be like, "Oh, it's cool. It's a kids thing." But there are some adult jokes that went over my head when he goes, "They work for peanuts." <laughs> did did not uh, get the expression of working for peanuts? Yeah. you know, as being cheap. I was like, "Of so course, he's saying, elephants love peanuts." Oh, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like little little jokes like that are kind of nice. Like, I like when he, he goes to the bar and he's like, "I'll take a scotch or on, on the rocks." He's yeah. like, "With ice, ice this time." I mean, ice. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then he, you know what though? He ended up pulling a rock out of that cup, he and did. then he still like drank it. <laughs> like, he's, dude, ooh, he's got a problem. Well, and this is one of those moments. So he's in the club. He's waiting for Jessica Rabbit. He he's gonna meet Acme here. But this is one of those moments where you don't realize what they went through to create this movie. You've got this octopus who, by the way, this octopus behind the bar has eight arms and is doing no, zero flair. <laughs> yeah. He is just pouring <laughs> drinks like a machine. And then you got to co- go across the street to Tom Cruise's Tom co- Cruise, exactly. co- cocktails and dreams <laughs> where he's got to flip bottles around and yeah. shit. Come on. And he, There's and only one, one guy. One person gets a drink out of an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so Come I, on. I already love this octopus. But notice that everything in the octopus's hand was a real life thing. They were real glasses real bottles, real everything, and yeah. the cartoon was holding them. So if you go and watch some of the shit, they basically just had that stuff on strings, mm-hmm. and puppeteers were holding that stuff and moving it around in the air so they could shoot it with that stuff moving around, Jesus. and then the animators would draw in the octopus after the fact. It's it's crazy the amount of work that the animators went through. I think I, I got like, there was 82,000 animation cells were drawn for this film. <laughs> 82, 82 like because like it's it's real animation like all all these cartoon characters were drawn yes. and all of their movements had to be like completely planned out by page by page and then yeah. like superimposed somehow with fucking cinema magic into a film cell as well yeah. like just kind of overlay it i don't get it it's not that amazing guys <laughs> i mean they're all trained artists it's not like it's me sitting there like trying to sketch with the like the big eraser for big mistakes and trying to like <laughs> oh dang it i should scrub that out and i'll try again oh dang it i messed oh. up again. <laughs> damn dang it that's your fucking... <laughs> and that's what you gotta do uh, but but no i uh, all jokes aside Unbelievable. yeah Insane. It's yeah. like every single picture that they took, every frame, like you're saying, is like it has to be done. Now in like nowadays, which is equally as like anxiety risen ridden for me, doing it on a computer would be would be like obviously probably take some a lot of time out yeah, of it, but yeah. hand drawing all like eighty two thousand yeah. cells. I'm like okay, no. Dude, I know. It's amazing too. Then we had a little cameo from uh Betty Boop. Yeah. Did you recognize the voice of Betty Boop? Yeah. I think we talked about it this on a past episode. Yeah, I, was, I, I recognized the name, and I was I ho- hope we bring it up. It's so. May, May, May Questel, yeah. who is Aunt Bethany in Christmas Vacation. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> I, I was watching it, and Molly came in the room. She goes, don't throw me down, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, you nailed it. And she goes, that's really who that is? I go, yeah. yeah. She was the voice of Betty Boop. It was awesome. Nice. That is amazing. Well, speaking of like the animation, I think this is one of like the hardest sequences because – when when um, Jessica Rabbit Jessica Rabbit comes out, uh, her dress is sequined, <laughs> and so that was like the hardest thing to nail down was like her sparkling dress being all sequined and everything like that. And I, I like is watching like the behind the scenes on this and like the animators like yeah we did this and this. I'm like uh huh uh huh. I don't know. I, I, don't I still know. don't get it. Can you explain further, please? No. Slow Absolutely down. Not. Slow <laughs> slow down. Oh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the when when he's got that reaction, um, 
uh, Valiant to should we to, just talk about let's it? Let's just bring it out. Like he has this <laughs> reaction to Val to Jessica Rabbit, and I'm like, still as a 40 year old male, I'm like, yep, yeah. <laughs> like how did they? They could never. <laughs> they can never draw a cartoon that looked like that in a PG movie <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> that is just unbelievably <laughs> over the top for a woman. In fact, did you read that apparently to give her more of a cartoon feel, her boobs went like normally when a, a woman's boobs would bounce down, hers bounced up yeah. to make it seem more like Cart- weirdly <laughs> cartoonish. <laughs> It's like they, I mean they they yeah, went for it. Things oh are defying they, uh, gravity, literally they, defying they, gravity. They <laughs> broke into the studio one night and a guy was there late. Like oh oh uh, oh, oh god, I was just <laughs> working on my Jessica Rabbit. That's right, guys. <laughs> just working on Jessica Rabbit. I was, I was just just doodling. Well, I was just gonna say like when they were filming this, they didn't know what she looked like. Oh, and so okay. like Bob Hoskins was like, that's nothing what I thought like on set yeah. when I filmed Did, it. Didn't they tell him just like picture picture the most beautiful. Thing he's probably he's probably such a sweetheart. He's like, I'll picture my wife, yeah, or something like that. What's you your know? fantasy, man? Yeah. What's your fantasy? Oh, just give us, yeah, you know, just, just put it in your mind, yeah. Uh, but like, it's got to be that the animators like he saw a woman in his life, a like a drop dead redhead with huge tits, and <laughs> yeah. There's not social media. There's not Instagram back wore, then. That wore the just same scroll- dress every Bob day. Bob Hoskins is just sitting on the toilet scrolling through all these. <laughs> frick- you know, that's what? the one. Oh yeah, that's, that's that'd be my fantasy. I'll just I'll just I'll you know wipe and get out there and imagine that. <laughs> Like, <laughs> had to use your imagination. I just used my imagination, aka Instagram. I okay. told my dad we were doing this movie. <laughs> it's not real. It's I told not my real. dad we exist. were doing this movie, and the first thing he said was like, "Oh, I fuck Jessica." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I was just, I was just <laughs> let's let let's let Sean's dad represent the majority of probably people in the world, men yeah. and women. Like, I mean, she's a she's a beautifully drawn creature. <laughs> I mean, you know, what? I, had a, I had a bit of a problem here. Okay, where's her nose? Where's her nose at? Where is it? You're a nose guy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a nose guy. Well, you're not gonna accommodate the nose guys out there. Did it? <laughs> did it slightly? Did it slightly turn you down <laughs> when when you found out it was Kathleen Turner? And like, all I could picture was modern day Kathleen Turner. And I was like, uh, I'm not doing it for me anymore. Huh. Well, <laughs> so she was why why is she uncredited? I don't know. I, I don't I, understand the movie world and how people are uncredited in roles cuz it's a huge role. Gigantic role. I mean, and even if even if she like wasn't doing stuff at the time, I don't even know. Even if she wasn't like as as a prominent actor as she is kind of now. Yeah. Um, you would think you'd, she would still be credited. Maybe she just didn't want to be. They said she was eight months pregnant when she when she yeah. did her lines. <laughs> yeah. Going, <"Ugh." laughs> this sucks. <laughs> what was that? It, they credited the singer. The singer was credited. Yes. The singer was credited. Yes, mm-hmm. but not but not her speaking not her. voice. Yeah, weird. Super strange. Super strange. And how I still don't understand the patty cake thing. <laughs> that was funny though. <laughs> Come on, because like that's that's what I remember as a kid just being like. What? Why? I don't, why are they getting so? Why is that weird? Probably set a weird precedence for a lot of it kids did. on the playground. <laughs> Be like, sure as shit, can't man, go man. play patty cake with Tom. <laughs> you're not play, Tommy. You playing patty cake with Tommy? What not the heck? <laughs> I thought we were play, supposed to play Foursquare today. <laughs> AJ, I no. played patty cake with Josh the other day. I don't know what the big Whoa. deal is. <laughs> you're not supposed to play patty cake with him. We could play patty cake right now. I, I got about two minutes. Probably how long you'll last. It's about it's, you're. St- you know, you're so ready, you're so easy, just want to always play patty cake. Well, I love patty cake. Well, uh, w- don't we all? <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes you got to have a little restraint where you're going to do your patty cake. <laughs> I'll do I'll patty, with you. I'll patty cake in the classroom, I'll patty cake by in myself. In the closet, by myself. <laughs> I love it. In the bathroom, before and after I shower, before, during I shower, before during the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's such a like a Zucker Brothers joke though. Like as soon as they cut to like, he's like, oh, she's playing patty cake. But then like they show him like they, actually playing yeah, patty cake. Yeah, it's uh, like I, they, I like that. Do you a think lot. it was supposed to be a sexual act? And then yeah. they're like, no, we're just gonna, we yeah, can't, we can't we're just gonna that. make it weird. It, uh, but it would make sense. In, innuendo the whole thing. Yeah. But that's what's brilliant about like these com th- or these cartoons back in the day is that they were catered mostly to children, obviously, but like they knew. That adults were watching as well, kind of like Pixar movies nowadays. Yeah. They'll they'll add in like they'll a little subtle, a things in there. A little yeah, subtle thing a that point. only like thirty year olds will get. You know, respect <laughs> only thirty with, with three year old dinky dinkies. <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> well, so let's move on. So Valiant and Maroon show Roger the photos, and he leaves in anger. The next day, Valiant finds out that Marvin Acme was killed. Currently, Roger is the prime suspect. At the Acme factory, Valiant is introduced to Judge Doom and his gang of weasels. Having jurisdiction over Toontown, the judge demonstrates how to kill Toons by using dip. Dip. All Did right. you catch that one? Oh, sorry. Right. Go ahead. No, uh, I was just going to say. <laughs> Before um, we got to the, the, the stuff, I was going to, yeah. Well, I... Maybe I'm jumping ahead here. Okay, so spoilers. Well, I'll go back. So. If you, if you're, you know, and uh, but was this is supposed? This is like a noir. Like the theme is like a noir style, 100%. like murder mystery. Pinot noir. Yeah, yeah Pinot noir. <laughs> yeah. You know, deep reds. Um, you oh, know, but red. but bright. I'm gonna further take it away. Bright flash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm>, no. <laughs> All right, I'll get one. <laughs> Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of fruity, but nice and nice, and like it's, even. It's literally enough. Oh, okay, I, I can't take I, it anymore. We <laughs> anyway, um, hey, listen, we're not bad. We just podcast. We this just way. podcast <laughs> this way, okay? Uh, <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right, it fine. Is, it's no, getting closer. It's getting closer. closer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically saying, like, okay, this is a murder mystery. It's like, but once. Once Doctor Doom or whatever his name is, Judge, like, Judge Doom, <laughs> steps on steps on scene. Is there any real doubt about who set who <laughs> up? <laughs> like, is it really a mystery at this point? Are we really sitting here thinking, like, yeah, I don't know who it is. Must be the guy with yeah. the trench coat, wearing all black and a black hat. Yeah, looks look- like looks like Black Spy from Mad Magazine, but I don't know. He's on the level. <laughs> like, yeah, the, he seems like a good. <laughs> he's, he's a judge. Like a nice guy. Like <laughs> Like he looks like, like he's is wearing. That what we're doing? Looks like he's wearing a mask of his face. <laughs> so he no, nah, he he, he's he's a he's a public official. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it actually turns out he, I've never seen him blink. Uh, That's <laughs> probably totally normal. And he didn't on he set. Didn't Christopher Lloyd like he like went that deep and he's just like I'm not gonna blink anytime I'm on camera. I I'm he like, went he went T1000. He did. They Jesus. told Zemeckis was like, hey, you need to go T1000. Don't blink. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> I'm Christopher Lloyd. And it makes it look, <laughs> I'm you don't know that he doesn't blink, but you subconsciously know something's wrong with him. Well, then yeah. you, you got to imagine like his, his role as Doc in, in Back to the Future, just so animated and not yeah. Judge Doom, yeah, where yeah. he's probably blinking several hundred <laughs> times, you know, just uh, just be, just being animated yeah, as, absolutely. as much as he is. Um, yeah, he, he's, Sorry, he's very terrifying. <laughs> have, have we gotten to where we find out um, his brother was killed by a tune. So, so that's where I was actually going to go back okay. to. Like, okay. um, that that Warner shot, yes, was awesome. I want to talk I, about. this. I never noticed it. It, it. He's uh, he gets to his office and he sits down, and then it comes away from him and basically tells a story. Yeah, through these photos, and then it comes up to him like an hour later, and he's passed out. It's, it's brilliant. Right. It is. Man. It is. It is like storytelling to a T. It's like it's like I was mentioning Hitchcock off air earlier. It is uh, rear window, like because uh, Jimmy Stewart is all is all broken and held up in his in his apartment, and you're like, why? And so it goes through like all of his pictures of him, like you know, racing and everything like that. And there's like a crash one as well. And then it gets to him. You're like, okay, well, there's the story right there. Gotcha. It is the same thing. It's visual storytelling. He, like he mentions it earlier. That his brother or his partner yep. was killed in by by a cartoon, but and now we now figure we it really out. Know. We get gotcha. so much history in just one little pan, in one in one little oneer pan, and it is that is pure fucking cinema. And it's brilliant. I think that's a Zemeckis thing because that's the intro to Back to the Future. True, it's just yeah. this like, hey, we're just going to show you this place in one shot, and there's a bunch of information that you need to figure out. Yeah, it's amazing. It's 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 so I, like as soon as that shot hit i'm like this is this is so good <laughs> i love this it's it, fucking beautiful you, you're absolutely right it is definitely a zemeckis thing like because even the music even the music lends to this yeah. and, and as a zemeckis film you know it matches this back to the i remember literally thinking and i'll, I'll be honest with you so as i've said before when i have to rewatch these movies that i haven't seen in a long time i do not look anything up before my first watch. Correct. Same for me. And so i i always go into it as blind as possible as as best i can and there are moments that I was just like, that feels like Back to the Future. That felt like Back to the Future. That pan shot with that music, that building, like, you know, almost orchestral, like, uh, like horn section that's kind of behind it. I'm just like, wow, that's Back to the Future. And it's, it's so present. He you know? even says at one point, Christopher Lloyd says, he's talking about the freeway, says, as far as the eye can see, my God. 
It'll be beautiful. God. <laughs> he says that in Back to the Future. He goes, he does. pine trees. As far as, far as I, I can, can see. see. Oh, Peabody. <laughs> he owned all of it. A plan of breeding, breeding pine, pine trees. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's, it yeah. had to be a nod to that. Yeah, uh, yeah you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, let's just get it out of the way. Fuck this dip scene with the dude. Shit. Oh my god! It like, killed it hurt, me. It hurt me. <laughs> I never want to watch this movie again no. because of this scene. Like, why did they have to go so overboard and make me feel bad for this shoot? I like, think it's like f- reminiscent of a of a pet. Pretty it much, it is. You know that beautiful little shoe. This just became like, a core uh, memory. Yes. Ugh. This is a core memory that you have locked far away, and if you rewatch this, you remember. This little shoe's just like, hey man, he's like lost his other shoes. He's yeah. like, hey, you look like a nice guy. Hey, I gotta get you back wear in the box. Kills it. You wanna wear me? You Insane. Is that yeah. why he became a shoe shoe salesman later in yeah. life? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I wanted to make sure every pair got its owner. <laughs> it's like you're doing charity work. That's your damn. You didn't right. get paid at journeys. This is why I think I every inanimate <laughs> object has feelings. This is exactly no. why. <laughs> you're right. No, you know what I'm talking about. I think about. you just unlocked it. I'm pretty sure this movie yeah. made us this is the reason I can't throw out a backpack I have from high school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like oh, that backpack so sad. right there. <laughs> that guy, he hangs out with us every podcast. I'm not going to get rid of it. I remember being <laughs> okay. on the bus going to school. I was like drawing or something like that. Probably like 82,000 cells or something like that. And <laughs> that makes sense. I was drawing and like my pencil like broke. And so I was like, oh, fuck. And I threw it out the bus window. And then like maybe not even a mile down the road, I'm like, oh, I feel bad. Yeah. That thing had feelings. That I thing, bet. you know what? That this thing, movie. that number two, oh, is number zero. Has anyone now. ever seen a number one pencil? I, well, you don't because they are thrown away out the <laughs> yeah, window. Exactly. <laughs> it's from the forties when <laughs> nobody cared about. No one gives a shit. That's why I tried. That's why I gave up drinking. They all got the, dipped. <laughs> the voice, the voice of the shoe, was Nancy Cartwright, Bart Simpson's voice. Oh my oh! god! No kidding. Yeah. They had a ton of people on this just doing voiceover acting. Oh, and, yeah. And animated, like making voices for characters. But yeah, Nancy Cartwright. Wow. The voice of Bart Simpson herself. Wow. Nice. Well, that's perfect. Crazy, Honestly, huh? Still satisfied. Also, let's stay on the Back <laughs> to the Future train here. Um, Charlie Fleischer is the one that did the voice for Roger Rabbit, mm-hmm. who seems like an insane person, by the way, if you like watch Look behind the scenes. Anything. <laughs> he apparently, <laughs> John might be able to elaborate on this. Apparently, he made himself a Roger Rabbit costume. So when he was on set, he was wearing it, even oh. though he would never be in the movie like physically. He like he went, wore he went to the depths. Like, he, he was very dedicated to this. And I don't know if you guys have seen him in other movies or not. I mean, besides Back to the Future. That's what I was getting to. Part two. But um, he went on set and like basically fed Hoskins and everybody his, yeah, yeah, his yeah. lines because... He didn't want Hoskins like looking at a a tennis ball the entire time because right, that's right, what right. they do. And but yeah, you're right. He wore his costume and he was on set every day. Like every every time that there was a Roger Rabbit scene, he was there. And it's <laughs> that's fucking great. Dude, Is it a, crazy or brilliant? Because I don't know. that's the that's I the think, I think words of line. I think but, he just likes the craft of filmmaking. Like like Tom Cruise in the new <laughs> Top Gun Maverick or whatever. It's yeah, just like yeah. I'm being involved in everything, you know. Yeah. But apparently Charlie Fleischer would like walk down to like craft services where all the other movie people were at, and he'd be wearing the costume, they'd be like, that movie about the rabbit is going to be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even look like a rabbit. What? He doesn't even look like a rabbit. Nobody knew what it was. They're like, that guy's supposed to be that, a rabbit. He's wearing that's, bunny ears, and that is it. That's, 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 that's what they what took are they away. What down there? That's what they took yeah, away in Hollywood at the set of like all these different movies are being made. It's like, yeah, it's not going to be a good one. It's not going to be a good one. Yeah, <laughs> no. But I did just walk like four... St- I watched four stormtroopers walk by. Yeah, yeah. like that's what the totally fuck? Fine. Uh, Robert, <laughs> Z- Robert Zemeckis is going to have another flop. He's making a furry film. Uh, <laughs> what the hell's going on with that dude? But uh, Charlie Fleischer was in Back to the Future Two. Do you know who he was in Back to the Future Two? The He's voice a, of the, Roger Rabbit was an actor in Back to the Future uh, Two, heavily under makeup, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, then I. He don't was know. in the future. He was the guy that's like, wish I could have gone back and put some money under cubbies. Is He's that the, who he's it the was? guy that when when he first gets to the future and he like he's like save the clock tower you know but he's the future yes, version yes, of that yes, yes. put some money on the cubbies that's oh, him man. yeah pretty crazy I I was uh, yeah I was gonna say it was the guy who who got upset be- or, or or it was the guy who's like scram McFly who's <laughs> <laughs> like pushes no, away that was the, the dude from the Burbs that's right that, that was, was the, the Burbs, Burbs guy yes. and then I was thinking then my second thought was is the guy I think he stole his wallet. <laughs> He stole his wallet. <laughs> he stole his wallet. <laughs> he 
<laughs> so, I can't wait for Back to the Future. I can't wait for Back to the Future. <laughs> All right, so Valiant returns to his office only to find baby Herman waiting for him, claiming Roger is innocent and, ta- and talking of Acme's will. He finds Roger hiding out in his office and claims his innocence. I spelled that really weird. The weasels show up, but Valiant <laughs> is able to successfully hide Roger. Roger and Valiant go to the bar across the street to see his girlfriend, Dolores. He leaves Roger in a hidden room while he goes out to investigate. So this is a scene where him and Rod. No, they do this after the car chase, right? They go to the movie theater. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll okay. get to that in the okay. next scene. Yep. Uh, can we talk about Bob Hoskins real quick? Yeah, Please. we probably should. Huh? I... Uh, I it he seems like such an unusual choice for this because he's usually like playing like British gangsters in in those kinds of movies and like mm. real hard men pretty much, but he really liked the idea of taking this role because it was like a, a finally a movie his kids could watch. Okay, and he, I, I mean I think he's brilliant and like I don't it just seems like that kind of you know character actor who just plays those kinds of roles is kind of typecast a little bit yeah. wouldn't be like this animated kind of and wanting to work with nothing you know well and that was the thing that's why he that's why he got so much praise from whoever gave this a bad review the last thing or middle of their their review of this was how wonderful bob hoskins was he was it, how insanely great he was because he is working with nothing yeah the man is working with nothing nothing Absolutely you, you nothing. Forget, it's done so well that you forget that. Correct. Apparent, apparently, that kind of drove him crazy after the movie. What? Did you guys read that? I heard about he, this. His like mental issues were like he he was like working with nothing so much, but he was projecting like what he thought like uh, rabbits oh and weasels. Jessica God. Rabbit would look like and weasels. Um, he looked he had that in his mind so much that like after the shoot was over he started seeing that like he <laughs> oh, he like no. saw someone saw a woman's hat and he saw like one of the coyotes come out of the hat and he was like freaking this is out months after he's done filming he took a year off that what? yeah that's right he said he didn't take another role for a, a year it's cr- at least. like i can i mean i i get it i guess yeah. i mean I, i've never been in that position at all but like <laughs> But you just got to hand it to the guy. <laughs> I of, wonder if of, he even watched the movie. You know, not only is he working with, with, you know, cartoon rabbits, he's working with cartoon characters that he's talking to, looking at them out the window. He's looking at them down the street. He is interacting with them, just bumping into them. Yeah. I mean, it's everything. He's talking to bullets of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's talking to bullets. Okay. It's insane, man. Yeah. It's crazy. The, 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 best, the best thing I heard about Bob Hoskins was that um, – Two weeks for two weeks straight after showing the movie to his young son, his son wouldn't talk to him because <laughs> his son was mad that he was in a movie with all these cartoon characters and didn't let his son oh. come. He didn't oh. let his son come meet them. Okay, okay. his he was so good that his son thought that he really was acting oh with these God, that's animated people, <laughs> and his son was so mad at him. That's beautiful. Until he finally was able to be like, you don't understand, like they're they, they were drawn. So he's that's like, great, dude. He's like, he, he's trying to explain to his son, no, Bugs Bunny was not there. Like, I didn't yes. fall a thousand stories with Bugs Bunny. Correct. Oh my! Isn't Lord. that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to be a dad. Oh, that's oh, hilarious, man. <laughs> yeah, God, that's good. It's amazing, though. Like, it's for me, it's kind of weakened at Bernie's level yeah. acting skills. Almost. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something that no one else can. Th- can do that it's it, it, he makes it so easy like bernie did in weekend at bernie's that yeah like, you're like oh whatever like he's just act he's just an actor but when you think about the surrounding circumstances of it i mean he's getting dragged around it, by a bunny a rabbit that's not even there mm-hmm. but yeah. he's, but he makes it look there i never once see he's looking at when the weasels come in to like see him in the apartment uh and he's hiding roger under the sink which i don't think we've necessarily got to yet but uh yeah oh yeah he did yeah. Um, the gun, there's an actual physical gun on a string walking up to him Yeah, <laughs> that he yeah. has to pretend like a weasel's holding. It's oh, insanity to me. my lord. I, I, mean, I can see why he went crazy. Even that, even that seamless of a, of a shot where it's, you can tell it's a real gun. Like, you, obviously, your, your eyes, it's, it's the uncanny valley, you know. I can tell if that's a real prop or not. But, like, just having that, like you're saying, like, having <laughs> just that, and then, like, looking at someone's eye line, like, it's just... How it's do you nuts. not just turn and laugh at that? Yeah. Well, How he, do you not just, like, crack at that, yeah. bro? And he even said, it's really... Picture this. Like, anybody listening right now, picture that six feet away from you is a, is a stuffed animal rabbit. And you're practicing your lines, and you're looking at it, and you're focused on that rabbit. And they go, okay, now we're ready to do the scene. And they remove the rabbit. 
you your eye line now goes past the rabbit, and that's what you're <laughs> you're focused on something ten feet away, yeah, instead of six feet away. So you almost have to like, jeez, cro- cross your eyes almost <laughs> like, to pretend like you're looking at something. You would. I think that's it's exactly insane. what you would it's do. Holy I mean, cow. You see, you see like people like behind the scenes of Marvel movies nowadays, and it's all like the blue screen, yeah, which yeah, yeah. they did in blue this. Blue light, you got to watch out for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get your Felix Reese. <laughs> Felix uh, f- feel the bird. Don't be a nerd. <coughs> feel the bird. Don't be a nerd. Um, nerd. But nerd, like nerd. it's somehow somehow it's better in this even. like Especially when it goes to Toontown, it's like all blue screen, green screen kind of stuff. But somehow like he pulls it off way better. Yeah. I think it's because it's, it's kind of a secular thing that he's dealing with. Like yeah. he's either got, he's either, you know, dealing with the elevator guy, droopy <laughs> or, you know, what bugs and, and Daffy or whatever. It's either like that. It's like, it's intimate. It seems more yeah. intimate. That's, yeah. that's what I'm getting at. We haven't gotten to him going into Toontown yet. Have nope, we? Not yet. Not yet. Nope. Okay. But what about um, them at the bar? So well, let's let's move that, on. It, you let's wanna, do it. Well, te- I'm te- really excited. You're talking about when Doom shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's move on then. Okay. So De- Jessica comes to his office, explains that Roger was set up by Maroon. Dolores helps him realize that Cloverleaf might also have something to do with it. Returning returning to the bar, they realize that Judge Doom has come looking for Roger. The group narrowly escapes using Benny the cartoon taxi cab, hiding out in a theater. Valiant explains some things to Roger. Then he leaves to confront Maroon, but someone mysteriously shoots Maroon while Valiant is in his office. I do have to say real quick that yeah. when Jessica Rabbit comes and visits him in his office and is like being all sexy and shit and fuckable, apparently to my dad. <laughs> um, Jeez. Uh, we went from <laughs> yeah. we, we wow. went from PG to rated R <laughs> NC good, seventeen man. almost. You know you 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 know what you're doing when you come to this show. Real quick, <laughs> some people don't. Okay, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I like I like when he when who she's, is it? Joey? Sorry, Joey. Sorry, Sorry Joey. Joey. We'll get to Jaws. Jaws <laughs> will be it's yours. It's up next, Joey. Jaws will be yours. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I just like the little. I want to fuck that shark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Joe. Fucking sex doll I'm shops sorry, with, with Bruce the the shark in there. Oh, that's a sexy shark. God damn it, Sean. Go ahead and t- tell us your serious. I was just gonna say I like the fan of teeth. I was just gonna say I like when he lifts his head up and he hits a rack. It's it's funny. <laughs> I also like that. <laughs> It is actually, it don't, but those are the moments where you're like, "This is PG." Yeah, yeah. You're right. What is going on right now? He just, they, you could avoid that. He just <laughs> lifts his head up, and her boobs go. <laughs> they fart. Is that what happens? Yeah, they farted. I've never touched a boob, so I don't know. <laughs> I have no oh idea. Anyway, they're in the movie theater. <laughs> oh God, sorry, <laughs> sorry, the bar. <laughs> Uh, is, this, is this my turn to take over? Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. Okay, man. so anyways, they're in the bar, and it's coming back to the idea of. Really, what goes into these types of scenes, and and he's they're hiding away in the um the the pre prohibition or prohibition era, which by the way is store. a really cool bar, super. Cool. Yeah, I don't want to hang out. There. I want to go to that uh, bar. Ink and something is that what the uh, name of the bar actually, is? Ink and paint. Ink and paint. Is that it? What was it? called the um yeah. In fact, I never knew that until I actually put it in the Ink and Paint Club. Ink yeah. and Paint yeah. Club. I thought it was such a cool thing. And by the way, big fan of speakeasy. You know, oh. I, I love brunch and I love speakeasies where I can overpay for drinks. What <laughs> what can I say? Uh, but I'm a white male. Uh, that was a podcast. I am. Oh, man. I just want to get out for the weekend. <laughs> I and, recognize uh, your voice. Are you a podcaster? Do you, uh, do, you do podcasts? We yes, I do. do. <laughs> As I sip my $12, $13 drink. Uh <laughs> Well, I, I used to have it harder. I used to listen to Ice Cube and, and ride my bike back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, oh, on our last I'm just, our two episodes before this, I'm just saying. <laughs> there ain't, there ain't no, uh, that's why you guys tune in. There ain't another podcast in the world that reviews Who <laughs> Framed Roger Rabbit and has this many laughs. laughs. So, oh. so I'm, but there's a, there's all these moments of like. You have to think about these are dim lidded rooms, right? They're dim yeah. lit rooms. Yeah. Like that's what they are. And this is all the lighting that they have to work with. And like this is supposed to be like the bar that all the all the real people go to or something. And then you got cartoons that are walking through and the we- the weasels and you got uh you got Roger Rabbit going through there. And in the back, that's another point of what you guys are saying is is this like there's like lights that are getting knocked around and stuff, yeah. and the shadows have to accommodate yeah. the cartoon characters. They have to draw that in. They have to import that 
into the actual yeah. movie itself. And and uh, I read, and this is the first time I read this upon research, and maybe you guys can speak to this, Sean, I don't know, that it's called knocking the lamp. Mm. where It's like an industry term it's based like, off of this movie, right? It's an right? industry term based off Roger Rabbit that you're like, like the the lamp got knocked, and as it's swinging, it has to accommodate the shadows of Roger Rabbit, who's in this scene, who's it's not insane. actually who's insane. not actually in this scene. It's insane, dude. And like even even like the shadows of like 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 you're saying like low dim lit like like especially in uh, Valiant's office, right? Like right. I, I noticed like Roger Rabbit, like the shadows, it would just be like a half of his face. I'm like, I don't I don't even know. I don't yeah. know. Like you, you just you just don't know that, and and it's it's a it's a thing that they started using as as terminology essentially for things that we notice, but the audience never well, th- will. Those Fascinating. Are the, those are the subtle things that if they do it right, you don't even notice it because right. it is normal looking. Correct. And if they do it wrong, it'll ruin the movie. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like a thankless thing. Hundred yeah. percent. Like 100%. what did you, what did you oh I worked on the new Roger Rabbit movie. What'd you do? Oh I just made sure shadows look good. I did the shadows. Oh, it was, oh okay. Well, I guess work, work for a couple of days or something. That's a bit. Uh, I was there for six months. <laughs> six months. Yeah. Yeah. You must not I be did that fast. I worked like twenty hours a day. No kidding. <laughs> Well, I never, on I shadows, didn't the shadows. He's yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's stoked that you yes. didn't notice it, like the bass in a band. Yeah. Like he's just like, oh, I didn't know you were there. Uh, good, <laughs> good. Whew, thank God. <laughs> so I, I had a few, I had two recasting things that I thought of if they were going to modern, if they were going to redo this, no qualms of era. They were just going to recast this. Uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan would be valiant. <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> he looks like that. I need a. I need an explanation. <laughs> no, he just. I need he you looks, to go. The first, go ahead. The first time he showed up on screen, I was like, "That looks like Joe Rogan." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "It might be kind of funny if like Joe Rogan was doing <laughs> some detective work." But you'll appreciate this one. I started off with the worst one. Uh, Earl, the guy that we all initially hate in the bar, right, right, who then comes through, right? Where you, oh, you can't trust Earl, but we yep. can trust him. Yep. Rick Ducumin. Oh, would have been perfect oh, as Earl. I don't Dude. know why, but as I was coming here, I was just thinking about Rick to come in just because. Yeah. Maybe because I wanted him in this movie. We think about him a lot. Yeah. I, he could have been Earl. He just could've. that weird little B-list role. Oh, no my big God. Deal. You're 100% right. That would have been phenomenal. Yep. Now, granted, this guy did a great job. Yeah. But at the same time, you're like, oh, man, Rick to come in. And, and like with his voice, with his voice, yes. <laughs> it's just it's it's. It's gotta be perfect. It's just, yeah, yeah. I've seen a, I've yeah, seen I've seen a, yeah, rabbit around here. Yeah. Here he is. <laughs> 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 you know, you're just like, like that's Rick you coming. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, I it love been that awesome, dude. so yeah, much. That's perfect, I, dude. My recasting was Tim Curry. Yeah, and they said it. They were like Tim Curry was a. You was were a thinking that in your head, really? And, and I was they, thinking yeah. that, and I was like, dude. and Tim Curry is terrifying. Okay, he's terrifying. too terrifying to he be is in just this movie. Terrifying, uh, yeah, he is. You're absolutely right. If they put any eye makeup on him at all, terrifying. Terrifying. Like, I mean, like if they darkened his eyes at all. <laughs> nope, nope, not at all, not at all. The if if anybody out there played the NES game for Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it's not it's not that great of a game. Here it's, it's pretty boring. Huh? If you if you uh, if you watch one of our friend, I hope he would someday listen to this because he's an idol of mine. Is the Angry Video Game yeah. Nerd? Yeah. He's just the, the greatest YouTube channel ever. In fact, you can all go type in Angry Video Game Nerd Who Framed okay. Roger Rabbit and just start being like, Confuse Breakfast sent me, Confuse Breakfast sent <laughs> yeah. me. But he, he breaks down I the game this. in an awesome way. Uh, and and it is, it's like kind of a weird game, but I used to play it all the time. Mm-hmm. And the best part of the game was when you finally got to jump into Benny the Cab. And you got to drive uh, the cab around this like street layout. It was almost like the first Grand Theft Auto in a way. <laughs> yeah. And oh like, gosh. yeah, I always had an affinity for Benny the Cab showing up so and how cool. cool that would have been. Was this was this Sega or Nintendo? NES. Yeah. NES. The regular the oh regular old eight bit Nintendo. Yeah. Oh wow. That would be interesting. Yeah, it was fun. Holy but that cow. Benny the Cab thing's cool. And then you even start diving deeper into that. Like, how did they have him sitting in a cartoon car driving down the road? Yeah. I don't understand these. It's ridiculous. Things. Like I, I saw a little bit of like behind the scenes, and it was just like literally Bob Hoskins in a real alleyway. I think it was a real alleyway, just with a steering wheel, and that's it. <laughs> and like then they had to just animate everything else. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. But still, he, they still moved him. 
Like modern yeah, day, they, they would, put him, like, he was they would like just put him in a room and they'd have blue screen scrolling. Like they were still moving him yeah. around. Jeez. <laughs> it's <laughs> That's wild, dude. I don't understand it. Well, like even with a movie like this, even has a great car chase. Like this, it's just, it's elevating everything every five minutes, you it know? Really and is. like And even heightening the stakes and everything. Like who did frame Roger? Is it Roger? Is it right. Jessica? You know, like once a story kind of gets, it got kind of seeps into your skin a little bit. You're like, oh shit, I don't know. There is a point, like as speaking my point earlier, it's like, yeah, there's really not much question to it, guys. <laughs> who, <laughs> who framed him? Yeah, it's super weird. I know. Oh, the guy dressed in all black. Oh, but every now and again, you do see it, and you're like, maybe Jessica Rabbit was in on it. Yeah. Maybe this is a deeper tale. Maybe it was Maroon. You know? Oh, maybe but he Maroon. got shot? Boy got shot now. A guy died in a PG movie. Yeah. He got shot with a gun. Dude. I think uh, there was squib. Uh, he got, like, there were squibs, right? There were, like, bullet hits on his back. Yeah. Am I wrong? No, this guy, no, this this guy, guy died. Was, he's, he's, yeah, he's dead. Like, he's, yeah. he's full lethal weapon, too, on this. Yeah. Like, he got shot. Like he's done. <laughs> he kind of goes, I mean, uh, 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 you can really say, <laughs> yeah. You can really say any lethal weapon. Uh, yeah. Well, lethal weapon too. I was thinking about like when he's drinking like the eggnog at you know the yeah. beach or in the house. And Very it's specific. Fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's Gary Busey. Uh, maybe it was number one. Okay. But we have to just get this over with. Right. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Listen, we've been building the case this mm. entire time. I would like to rule over who the most punchable face is, and it's Judge Doom. I, think I don't think you can tell me a more punchable face than for what for his actions <laughs> in this movie. He is such, and we haven't even gotten to even the craziest shit yet. I do. He's my most punchable face. I do agree. However, I'm going to offer one little piece of resistance. I want to push the fuck out of that baby. <sighs> <laughs> when, when it's not cute cartoon baby, yes. when it like gets into like, yeah, when he drops a stogie, it's a stogie. I punch and, a baby. Yeah, I'll punch. I'll punch that son of a bitch. Yeah. Are you gonna pick that over Doom? Or are we? Are we doing that rare thing where we there's so many to punch that we each get to get one? I in? think that Judge Doom, because he killed what's equivalent yeah. to a puppy or, yes, or a little kitty. I think I'm going. Unless with he's got something other than what we just said. The only thing I could think of was any of the weasels but yeah. since we have since we need something definitive yeah i'm gonna agree with you okay okay i'm gonna agree with you i think it's i think it's you know dr doom and uh <laughs> i always thought it. that doom the video game was but was based <laughs> off of this based on <laughs> i always <laughs> thought that was based on crazy eyes himself yep old crazy eyes old crazy eyes yeah no um once that hat comes off and you see that little like like like, like turd fluff of, of hair <laughs> with, was, with the wild hipster. eyes. He was a hipster before it was, it was cool, dude. 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 <laughs> he was hipster. Yeah, no, nah, dude. You're you right. You're right. Do you have... Uh, matches the drapes, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before we move on, you were asking about the movie theater. Do you what, got the something red about eye? that? Never mind. Oh, no. I, I just like uh, the, li the little tiny detail of when he's watching. I think it's... Um, who's he watching? Uh, oh, God. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, Daffy. You know, it's um, Goofy. Goofy. Duh. He's watching Goofy and he's admiring his yeah. work. I like that detail a lot. Where he's like, God, he isn't he so he's great? Very great. Oh, I love nobody, it. Nobody does that nowadays. They're yeah. like, we're the best. It's it's like he's watching what it seems like Buster Keaton or like Charlie Chaplin's like watching Buster Keaton or yeah. something like that. I don't know. It's 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 kind of just a little fun detail I like. I do like that aspect of it because you think back like this is the 1940s and you you think about like motion pictures and all this yeah. kind of stuff and. Yeah, you have Charlie Chaplin, you have the Three Stooges, you have all these guys, and, and the cartoons are those people, yeah. Yeah. you know, in this world, and I think that's fascinating, yeah. and how much they they appreciate it, even the execs who are, you know, trying to get the buck, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, I think that's that's really cool, yeah. like even Maroon, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, let's end this movie. So the final scene, Eddie goes into Toontown looking for Roger and the killer. Benny helps him and Jessica escape back to the real world once they realize that Judge Doom might be the bad guy. On the other side of the tunnel, Doom is waiting with a barrel of dip that ends up flattening Benny's tires, causing him to crash. Doom then has Valiant and Jessica taken to the Acme factory at the factory. Doom explains his plan to eradicate Toontown and tries to kill Valiant, Jessica, and Roger in the process. Valiant is able to kill the weasels and Doom to save the day. The dip machine is destroyed in Toontown, and the humans and Toons rejoice. Hell yeah! So, have you guys? Have you you guys have seen Sin City? Yeah, oh well, yeah, yeah. Um, so this this thing of them driving into Toontown yeah. is so. I feel like 
I love to think that Frank Miller took this <laughs> for Sin City yeah. of driving into like Old Town. Okay. Yes. Do you remember this at yeah. all? Like yeah, with yeah. Uh, with Clive Owen or whatnot, mm-hmm. and like he's like driving. You mean into where Old they're going Town. down the tunnel? And it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, he's oh. like going into Old Town. He meets he's Rosario like Rosario Dawson and that whole team. Yeah, yeah. And and I just think it's like I was like, oh, this is spot yeah, on. Yeah, that's is cool. Gorgeous. Yeah, yep. yeah. He's got the gun. He's test. He's got the his Yosemite gun. And everything. That's the. Ooh, here's a son of a. I want the gun with the with the bullets. God damn it! So well, you with guys the bullets. Said, I want the bullets too. I want the case, <sighs> the gun, and the bullets. Are you at any point you could have been like touch the button and then that's I the rule. I thought it no, was we, going I wanna, to be it. I want to do it when it's timely. And that it was, is timely. Well, I, yeah, you hit the. Pr- <laughs> <laughs> it is really frustrating. Mm. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, fine. I want no, uh, no. I want a glass of dip. No, no, <laughs> no. You don't. Yeah, I do. Gross. Gross. Uh, <laughs> Gross. Uh, mm. I'm so sorry, guys. It was hard. It, I mean, I'll give you guys the buttons next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the buttons. I'll give you control. Uh, I don't. Uh, this is see what's tough about this is. It could be a cartoon thing. Yeah. And it can be a real thing, yeah. like. We're so living true. in the world of real things. Okay. Of, of, of no, of of everything. This movie is tangible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if like you were in your gallery of the of the props that you yep. picked throughout our movies, this would be in a glass case, yes. but animated. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah. Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> She's not an object, Michael. Not okay? an object. She is not. My bad, bro. Okay, but bro. In the forties, she was. Okay, okay bro. Forties, <laughs> she. Whoa. True. We've I, come a I, long I, way. I, yeah, I know. I'm pointing it out. <laughs> I am pointing it out. I'm glad times have changed. I'm glad times have changed. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I want her. I'm gonna go with. I I forgot to bring it up before, but I believe when Hoskins or Valiant goes into his office and we get that wonder that we talked about earlier, he puts his hat on a Maltese Falcon. Oh yeah. From like I I assume the noir yeah. the noir film Maltese Falcon. I want the Maltese Falcon with the hat. Okay, comes with the hat. Yep. Two parter. All right, I got it. I know what I got. I have. I want one of the holes. Oh, nice! No, I want one of the holes. That's, That's a I'll great choice. You. How great is that? I'll trade you. You want to trade? Want to trade? No, because I'm gonna use the hole to take yours. <laughs> <laughs> Dick. <laughs> Dick. That is a great line, though. That I think I'm probably going to use from now from now on when they go. They go, Andy Valiant, where you been? Drunk. Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that line a lot. Might use that in the future. Yeah, that is great. Fair enough. Fair enough, man. I, 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 like I, you see him dump out his booze. Like he likes, He's looking at it. He's like, oh, I don't need this stuff anymore. But then he goes into Toontown. He's like, obviously, you're on something else. <laughs> he's on because, LSD. He doesn't need any shit. more whiskey. You went, in, you went on the Yellow Submarine. Like, <laughs> damn, dude. Yeah. You are at a different level now. Yeah. I would never go to Toontown. No? No. Don't think so? This is where, this is where adult viewing of this movie like, kind of made me just kind of like, uh, there is so much going on. It's a lot, a lot of anxiety. It is. But, like, even, even when like the cartoons are interacting or like when Ro- when roger rabbit's in his office just fucking <laughs> yes. shit up it's, just so it's like when someone comes into your house it's like oh i just don't take off my shoes <laughs> uh, oh i'm just you know i'll take this glass oh sorry i dropped it oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i Get spiked your glass after i chugged house. it yeah like what <laughs> I had a friend that just would like light up a cigarette in my college apartment just, <laughs> and he would just be like, I can ash anywhere. Right. And he would just start ashing <laughs> on the floor. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is going on? It's just That's because, basically what's happening. Like my, my old apartment was my chaos. <laughs> so if you moved some piece of trash in there, I'm like, it, it really irked me. It is one of those things. You're absolutely right. It's, like ro- having Roger Rabbit come into your place is the equivalent of having somebody who just lights up a cigarette in your home <laughs> and <laughs> like, then starts ashing it. Yeah, and then and then grinds his his muddy shoes into your yeah. couch, Dave Chappelle style. Fucking that you're couch. just like, what's that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Toontown was just so much like the the fake the fake Jessica Rabbit and yeah. just like it's like get out of here dude thank yeah. god you're leaving no kidding i bet you know what i'm sure it sounds real sexy in the moment but i bet Jessica Rabbit just throws her clothes everywhere in that apartment that's <laughs> <laughs> fucking terrible she just drops it wherever and i bet it's great for him aftermath not so much yeah, yeah. true yeah. true i 
Did you guys read that uh, Warner Brothers, like you said in the beginning, this is like the only collaboration with Disney and Warner Brothers uh, of their cartoon characters anyway? Okay. Um, they wanted like equal screen time. Was that right? Yeah. Okay. They wanted equal screen time. And so what they just did, they're like, they just put uh, the, the Bugs, Bunny, Bugs Bunny and... Uh, and Mickey Mouse. Yeah, Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse. Like sort of the counterparts from each uh, universe, and they put them in the scenes together. I'll say it does feel a little shoehorned. I mean, a little bit after the fact, after the movie, I'm like, wh- while watching, I won't give the movie a, a doc, but wh- after the fact, reading that, I'm like, you go, uh, uh, okay, it does, it just seemed a little shoehorned in. Little it'd bit. be like Batman and Wolverine being in a yeah, scene together. Yeah. It's just weird, You're right? You're like, like, but mm. they have to have equal screen uh, screen time yeah. uh. or something. I, I, I agree with you, um, to a little bit of a degree. Um, upon rewatch, I was thinking. Well, it's cool that they're both there, but then I, but I thought they looked weird. Mm-hmm. I thought, I thought like all the characters kind of looked weird. I thought a little different. Yeah, I thought they all looked a little bit different, and I, I was wondering why. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a like uh, infringement choice. Uh, you right. know what I mean? Like they're trying not to. Oh yeah, this is Bugs Bunny, but it's no, not Bugs Bunny. They definitely got all the rights to him. In fact, they didn't yeah. get. They they wanted more. They wanted and they, like Popeye. Yeah, and, and they couldn't get. They couldn't keep getting all the rights to these characters. They wanted. They wanted to do like Ready Player One with this. <laughs> yeah, space. exactly. They yeah. wanted it I really always, bad. I, I was thinking about that while researching. Yeah, dude. They they wanted it so bad. I, I I is what I is what I had heard. Yeah. And they wanted so many, but the rights to so many characters, yeah, and like so they just work. focused on the main ones, yeah. and that's why you got like. I think that the they got. I think they got Yosemite. They got yeah. Porky Pig. They got Tinkerbell. Those were the those were the two counterparts at the yeah. end of the movie. They were uh, yeah, the, they were the same. Yeah. Well, then like universes. Daffy Duck and Donald Duck yeah. while playing the piano in the, in the in the lounge or whatever. Yes. Like they they didn't want uh, Daffy Duck or it was it was either vice versa Daffy or Donald. They didn't want one to look in superior to <laughs> to the, to uh, to the other. They needed them to be counteract yeah so like they had them both fight but they had them both kind of win the fight it's you know so weird to it's, me. right <laughs> it's like well and that's politics bullshit and that was my thing is i i kept thinking of like bugs bunny looks weird and then but if you go back into like the old days of bugs bunny and and obviously we all know mickey how different mickey mouse is like mm-hmm. when he's like steering the steamboat ah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it's like but uh, compared to like now, right, right, you know, right. or or I don't know, twenty years ago, even yeah. with Mickey Mouse, they've, they've just evolved. They've evolved, and yeah. but the, but I thought it was a cool creative choice that they chose the Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse from the forties, yeah. and not the true, not the current. Good true. point. You know, of eighty eight, it was even different. Yeah, you know? true. That's a great so, point. Yeah, I thought that was a I thought that was a cool creative choice. Nice. So, and then you get into kind of the grand finale of uh, Doom. We we realize how big of a piece of shit he is yeah. Fuck you, and his Doom. plan but this like i still am <laughs> absolutely utterly terrified with this whole thing of him getting flattened by a steamroller i thought steamrollers were going to be a bigger problem in my life <laughs> 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 if you ever see yeah. one on the side of the interstate you're like don't go near that I, austin powers was what, what did it for me oh um i don't know why cartoons chose steamrollers to be like why? a huge threat in every cartoon yeah why? It's the scariest. I'd rather run into Sasquatch, yeah, than like have a steamroller run over me. Hundred percent. They should have had like something representative of the inflation rate or something. <laughs> You're you right. know, the, to be the villain. Something in those cartoons. actually terrifying. Yeah, come yeah, on now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, commentary. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Are, social, are we getting deep? There? Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, wow. Just now, I, I agree with you. I like, and I also really like. Again, upon rewatch. I didn't get the whole idea of why he, the eyeballs was a thing. Saw that when he was like holding his eyeballs, yeah. and he's like they're all scattered around. He's yeah. like picking one up or something, and I thought that was really interesting. And again, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know what's happening really here. I guess, and it was very, it was, it was great to be able to watch that. Yeah, all, feeling like the first time. He even had the glasses that had the side protector thing mm-hmm. on it, yeah, which That's didn't make right. any sense. But then you're like, "Oh, that makes sense." I should have got it. You could have got a pair of those. I got His glasses. Felix Gray could make a pair. Big dummy. Get at me. Get at me. Felix Gray. Uh, but no, <laughs> Wild Thing and, and Judge Doom. Yeah, we want that one first. Was this was this kind of a long sequence though of the of the same old same old? Yeah. Was it kind of a long sequence for you guys? Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, the guns firing, green. 
Oh, but the then sploosh. they got it to go away. Oh, it's coming back. Oh, uh, but I got it to go away. It, it, but, it's coming uh, back. But, no. It did it get me, eat. though. Like, I, I got to be honest. Like, I'm just like, I, I don't want them to do that. But I knew, I, obviously, I knew they were going to survive. It did, it did create, like, anxiety in me. It did kind of work it, a little it's bit. It's still terrifying. Yeah. yeah. That machine is just like, I don't want I don't want to see that. Yeah. That's scary. hundred percent. I like I say, leading up to this end and everything, I, I thought it was fun because it did keep me guessing a little bit with Jessica Rabbit when she's running away from the window and then she yep. chases her into Toontown and all that kind of stuff. And um the final warehouse kind of showdown and all that good jazz. And I, I thought it was a it was a lot of fun. I thought it was it kept me it kept me involved. Yeah. yeah. I did really feel like it kept me involved. Um, kind of up until the end, except for the fact that it's like, yeah, we've played this out with like the the what is it, double dare gun? Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. that is spraying at them. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I get it, I get it, okay. But at the in the end, I I did think it was a lot of fun. I thought the redemption story of like Valiant and all that yep. was very good too. So did you guys see that it was kind of kind of like a real story of like Val or uh, uh, Doom's plan? To like create the highway system yeah. and take away like the trolley system, it was kind of based off of true things that happened. It was like, like General Mills or something. General, or General Mil- Motors. Sorry. General Motors like wanted, <laughs> yeah, Mills. General Mills. That's, that's <laughs> Basically, right. General Motors like wanted people to buy more cars, so they were like, "No, we're gonna get rid of all these transit systems and 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 make roads, so you have to buy a car." It was like this whole cons- kind of conspiracy thing. That's where it's kind of based off of. So wow. actually, humanize the goons. Okay. Judge Doom was the worst thing to ever happen to our country. Are we humanizing Judge Doom? No, h- him dying because he should have survived and then he could have gotten r- or wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm screwed up. <laughs> no, go, go. we, we say we saved. This should have been real life because we don't want freeway systems. We want we want high speed trains like the yeah. rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I could go from Cedar Rapids to New York in like two hours. Boom. You know, on a high speed train, I but want. we've got uh, we've got interstates. Uh. So you know what we need is a system of fucking snow piercers. Yes, yes. Europe's got it right. Yes, they they've do. got that Eurostar train that like and they and don't drive anywhere. No, and, and 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 if they do need to get somewhere, it's like uh, that's like a couple miles. It's called bikes, <laughs> yo. And so we got electric oh, ones now. Oh damn it, exercise. Oh. oh. But no, you're hundred yeah, percent right. I'm just saying. I wish we had a high speed train to like L A. So not humanize the goons. We're actually praising Valiant in the tunes for stopping the admit, the emergence of the highway yes. system, right? The freeway yes. system, right? And, and we wish that was a real world. Yep. I eighty sucks. Yeah. I eighty sucks, and it's about to get worse. And so does every <laughs> other interstate, because oh yeah, uh, and, and Christopher Christopher Lloyd's over here talking about like eight eight lanes of. Of pure bliss of getting to wherever you want to go. It's like, no, that's not how it's it works not. because more cars exist now. <laughs> and now it's everyone's awful. texting and driving and yeah. right. driving, driving in the left lane. Zone. Driving in the fucking left lane, yep, dude. Yep. There we go. All right, this last thing I got. Anyway, this movie's pretty good. Last thing last thing I got, the <laughs> the ingredients of dip. Yeah. Did okay. you get that? He said it's turpentine, <laughs> acetone, and benzene. What is it? Which are paint thinners used to remove images from film cells. Wow. So like that absolutely I, makes total sense. I knew it was going to be something. That's awesome. So it's like a real life version of removing a cell of drawing. Yeah, in well, the real world. The shoe still didn't deserve it. No, I, so. I do like your your to your point of kind of getting annoyed at this at this end. Not annoyed, but you know, um, <laughs> where, where, like the 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 spray keeps coming at Jessica yeah, and, just and, and keeps Roger. Going. I like how he's like, "Oh, this is it," and then it like goes away. Oh, this isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like that line a lot. Anyway, no, you're 100 percent right. I love it. All right, we have broken this down with the modern eye. It is time to give our modern day ratings. AJ, what do you think? You know, I had a lot more fun, obviously, watching this than um, than previous experiences as a kid. I thought that the I I kind of connected. You know, you catch the adult jokes of it all, and, and yeah. so um, bringing it back around, it's it's honestly it reminds me of watching cartoons from. That era, the boomerang era, the even um, was well, like probably even 15 years ago, Cartoon Network and mm-hmm. all this stuff. You know, the, they had more. I, I don't want to say adult themes or anything to sound like it's over the top, but it's like they weren't afraid to incorporate that into these types of, of movies, into these types of shows, cartoons, what have you. And I really did enjoy it. Um, 
that being said, it still freaked me out, and at the 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 kind of kiddie aspect of it did draw me away as an adult. So I found out that like the base like initial screening of this was like 18 to 19 and like <laughs> give or take and most of them walked they out hated yeah, it. They hated it, right? but robert zemeckis was like i'm not changing a thing i'm not changing cool. a damn wow. thing and so i also would not change a thing about this movie however i'm going to sit right there at a 6.4 huh sean what about you man maybe it's because it's my first time watching it um I just think it's, and in researching, just like a, a impossibly made movie, and I don't know how they did it. Still in '88, I don't. I don't think you could really do it ever again. Um, I think that it's it's as good as a like a kind of a cartoon as it is. There's like a, a actual noir film that Zemeckis is trying to make, and I think the filmmaking prowess is there. Um, even though he could have just kind of phoned it in and be like, oh, well, the animators will take care of it. I think yeah. he took his due diligence. Is like, we're still making a film because we have Bob Hoskins and, and Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. Um, I, I respect all of that a lot, and I think it's completely entertaining all the way through. I was super impressed with it. I'm, I'm an 8.8. 8. 8. Wow. 8.8 .8 myself. Um. I came down a little bit from having watched it so many times as a kid that the stuff we talked about, like just the over, like it was just like sensory overload, almost like the whole movie. And like AJ said, the kid, the kitty aspect of it was kind of like I didn't like as much as an adult. So I would have I would have given it a five had I not researched what went into making this and how ahead of its time it was based on that. It's a ten for me, yeah. On on like what it what went in to make this movie. Absolutely. So absolutely. so put those together. Like I'm a seven point five. Mm. You know, I I think I, I like got to find a middle ground there. David Gould, executive producer, says, as a 34 year old man, I can now understand that funny feeling that Jessica Rabbit gave me, <laughs> and I'm not ashamed to say that she still does. But I digress. There is something incredibly clever about this film with the wacky mashup of bright and colorful cartoons and dark film noir. Watching this film was almost poetic in how it played with my internal struggle of growing up and letting go of my once bright childhood. Thankfully, we have you guys and movies like this to remind us that it's still okay to reminisce and take the time to be a bit loony. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is clever, well-crafted, and timeless. The story is absurd but fun. The visuals are breathtaking for the time, and the sound dubbing is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I still watch this film and enjoy it more and more as the years pass. As a piece of art that it is, my modern-day rating will have to be an 8.5. Also, if it isn't claimed wow. already, can I get the newspaper cutting where Goofy is cleared for spy charges as my problem? You got it. <laughs> That's yours, baby. You, you got, got it. it. That's amazing. <laughs> So with an 8.5 there, that takes us to a 7.8 as a modern day rating. And that ranks up decently high. That's going to get us to about number 26 in all the movies we've done. It is slightly better than Major League, slightly worse than Monster Squad. Hmm. I've, I feel kind of slightly comfortable with that. I'm it's good a, with it there, yeah. It's a good, it's a good comfortable. That That's the land of like... I will watch this whenever I have a chance. You know, I'm not going to seek it out, but I, I will on occasion go out. Those will and watch be a couple movie. of movies that I will show my four or five year old, like at that time. Yes. You know, Roger Rabbit and then Monster Squad. Better, better than Major, worse than Monster. Yeah. Okay. You okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> eh, oh, we can start yeah. over. You no, actually, you want to re-record? Actually, the episode? I, yeah. Uh, let's just scrap all this. Let's just do it all again. <laughs> Bug it. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next Wednesday. Summer of 70s. Begins. It's upon us. The summer of 70s. Uh, we are doing Jaws, followed by Monty Python and the Holy Grail, followed by Warriors, followed by Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <sighs> Jaws in the pool. Four, four We're movies. doing Jaws in the pool. Tell four. us you want it or not. <laughs> Tell us you want it if you want to see us in a pool. <laughs> Jaws our, in the pool. Our new production team's like, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year, Jurassic Park. Perfect. Yes. Great, great Steven episode. Steven Spielberg, Dean Cundy. Got, him, got them all one. in there. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go back and listen to that one right now. <laughs> it is wow. kind of fun. A fun one. Those are fun. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. 
Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to ConfusedBreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at ConfusedBreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.